Hello. Good to be with you again today and talking about the glory of God. I know that some of you probably come upon this and listen to maybe the first couple of minutes and then move on, which understandably so. But because of that, I want to say something right up front that I feel like um, is for all of us today. And um, it goes along with the song that I, I usually give everybody a song at the end of the program broadcast. I never know what to call this. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and give you the song. The song is by Christine DeMarco. And it's an older song, but it is literally my favorite worship song. It has been for probably five years now. It's called Take Courage by Christine DeMarco. Take Courage. And it goes into um, these lyrics that say, he's in the waiting. He's never failing. He's in the waiting. Take courage, my heart. Stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting. Um, and then it goes on to say, he surely keeps his promise to us. Um, and I will rise in your victory. Something like that. It's a really powerful song. And I just hear the Lord like just wanting to strengthen the weary today. If you're in a place of contradiction and you're like, I, you know, I, I know I feel this at times. I'm exposed to so many people that seem like they have so much more spiritually going for them than I feel like I do at times. And I'm just being vulnerable, just being honest. You know, you hear people that, um, see angels or see demons, have visions, um, they have trances, they literally get caught up into heaven. They're people that have <clears throat> significant God dreams when they sleep at night. Um, there are people that literally hear, it's rare, but hear the audible voice of God. Um, there are people that just, you know, they, they may not like see in the spirit realm, but they have such a gift of faith that they perceive in the spirit realm. And so they, you know, like, it's just like things just open up to them and they have these crazy experiences and they're able to say, well, you know, I didn't see with my eyes, but I, it's like I saw blah, blah, blah. And it's like this whole movie scene, right? I want to let you know, I cannot relate to any of that. I can't relate to any of it. I don't, I, I mean, I've had the, the closest thing I've had is like a dream when I'm sleeping at night that feels like it was from God. And I've only had maybe two or three of those ever. And even then I'm, I'm never like a hundred percent sure it was God. Right. And, um, you know, I spent years and years praying. I just want to see angels, you know, I've kind of half-hearted prayed that because I was scared too. Um, but literally anywhere that I've gone spiritually in my relationship with God has been because I chose to believe. And I still choose to believe. It is... It is literally a walk of faith. And there have been a couple of times where um, I have been in settings. I'm not one who like feels a whole lot physically in my body. Like I'm, I'm, I don't, I've never been like slain in the spirit where someone laid hands on me and prayed over me and I fell out and I, and it was, you know, Holy Spirit. That's, I, I have felt waves of his presence where I felt like, yeah, it's hard to stand up and I could fight it, but I could also give into it. I, um, I felt one time like God's presence so strong on me that my eyes were fluttering. My eyelids were fluttering and I knew I wasn't doing that, but literally like I, I don't have those kinds of experiences and I can pray over people and I will you know, see them experience miracles, see them maybe be slain in the spirit or whatever. I'm just saying, do not underestimate your relationship with God. Because what I can tell you is that I have the sweetest 
real relationship with my father, with God. And I had the most real, genuine, powerful relationship with Holy Spirit. I know Holy Spirit leads me, comforts me, speaks to me. Um, excuse my dog. Hey, Bonnie, no, no, no barking. I know the neighbor's dog is barking, but no barking. Um, I know that I have, you know, a very real relationship with Jesus and and yet I've never seen him, you know, like I know I'm going to see him one day. I know I'm going to like he's more real to me than my relationship with my husband. Right. So I know these things and I have these things because I've chosen to believe all of that to say, do not underestimate your relationship with God with the power that you have to move his heart beyond what you can see and feel. And I do believe in the supernatural. I do believe that these things really happen for people, even though I haven't personally experienced them. I, I do believe that the gift of tongues is real, even though every time I pray in tongues, I choose to believe that it's powerful and real and accomplishing something it is literally an act of faith and so judge me for all that i don't care i get judged for a lot worse i'm just wanting to um validate your relationship with god and however it looks for you however you experience him don't stop asking for more and that's where i get challenged because i kind of you know, through gritted teeth, I just choose and I believe and I set my will in a certain direction and the faith and the power of God come behind that. And there's a grace for me to do that. And yeah, sometimes I doubt. Um, but most of the time, I just don't even give myself the luxury of doubting or paying attention to doubt when it's there. But, um, you know, that I, I, I just want you to value and validate what you have with him but not be content with it and always be asking for more because there's always more of him. And we see through scripture that God responds to hungry hearts. He responds to insistence, perseverance, endurance, pressing in. Um, and, you know, sometimes when you have a lifetime of doing that, you can get weary and tired in that process because you don't want to be disappointed. You don't want to hope for something and feel that feeling once again of, ah, uh, mm, didn't happen for me, you know, and whether it's believing for something specific or just a, a, another level of the supernatural at work in your life. And I choose to believe that God doesn't withhold anything good from me. Anything that would be for my good, he does not withhold from me. So if I'm asking for more, if I'm believing for more, if I'm open and, you know, um, willing for, to be stretched and to be experiencing something different and new, um, and I don't see the different and new, then I have to choose to believe that it's because he's doing something that's of even greater value to me for eternity. And um, so I believe that. And I'm going to be the most faithful steward that I can be of what he does give me and what he and I have together. And I want to challenge and provoke you to do the same. However he meets you, Take it and spend it on more of him. However he meets you, take it and spend it on more of him. You will never regret that in the face of contradiction, mystery, disappointment, hope that is deferred, all the things. Keep choosing him. And, um, you know, that, that faith... Um, Faith really pleases God. And faith is never rooted in what we can see. By its very definition, faith 
has to do with contradiction and mystery and not seeing what we're believing. So anyway, we, we live in this place as, you know, spirit-filled believers who are constantly believing in the supernatural and asking God for more, etc. We are, um, we're having to learn to live in that that razor's edge place where truth is held in tension between more God, there's more of you. And um, I choose to believe and I stand on, um, on faith. My foundation of my relationship with you is faith. It's not experiential. It's not encounters. It's not the supernatural. But in standing in that place of faith, I am not going to settle for less than what God has for me. And clearly, this is a God. Jesus demonstrated it over and over and over again. And then the disciples demonstrated it. Once Jesus left the Holy Spirit for them, they demonstrated that he is a God, that if he created our, our physical and our spiritual senses for anything, he created them for him, for us to experience and encounter him and not only live by faith, but also to encounter him. And so we we press in for more. Ask him for dreams every night. Ask him to speak to you. Ask him to show you the spirit realm. Ask him to open up revelations um, that are that are impacting and, and real and supernatural. All the things that we read about in scripture. Um, and then I just want to speak one more thing into that. Um, you know, as, as we grow in relationship and friendship with more of the prophetic voices, I'm not going to name names just so you can figure out who on your own, but, and they, they, they tell us of different experiences that they have, you know, it's very easy to go on the spectrum from jealousy to, wow, can't believe that doesn't happen for me to the other end of, is this for real? Like, like. You know, and different ones of them, you know, Johnny's so funny. He'll be like, he just doesn't even ask any questions. When I'm with these people, I ask them questions. I'm like, okay, so you just told me that, you know, God said this to you and blah, blah, blah. So, or the, an angel did this, a demon did this. So did you actually see, like you're seeing me right now? Or was it like, um the eyes of your heart, you know, where you perceived it. And I just press, I do. I'm, you know, in some, some moments I'm probably the doubting Thomas and I'm like, you know, Jesus is patient with people like Thomas and says, okay, put your finger here in this hole. I really was, it really is me, you know? And I think that um, he's very patient with that, but he also loves it when we just believe, when we have childlike faith, where we are not stuck at the trunk of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I'm often stuck at the trunk of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I'm like, is this for real or is it not? Is this good or is this evil? You know, and, and so just being real, if you're there, press in for more. All right. Um, was there anything else I was going to say about that? Yeah, I was, my whole point with that, with other prophetic voices and people that have supernatural encounters, experiences, caught up into heaven or dreams, visions, all the things. When you hear those things, you want to listen to people that when they talk about those things, they continually point you back to scripture and they say, don't take my word for it. Read it in scripture and they'll point you towards maybe specific verses or whatever. And um, they will tell you to test the spirits. If you're one who sees angels, etc., they will tell you, test the spirits. Make sure that they are from Jesus and not, you know, deceiving you. Um, and they will always point you back to your relationship with the Lord. And so that's what I, I want to do. I want to say, like, allow yourself to be provoked and challenged and encouraged by those that have um, prophetic insight, like my own husband, but never, never, never trade it 
for your own relationship with the Lord. It's got to ring that truth bell in you. And that truth bell, I always say, it's like a, a bell that gets rung inside of you and you're like, something in you goes off and goes, ding, 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 that is truth. And that truth bell is guarded and protected by a couple things. It's guarded and protected by um, scripture. And if you don't know scripture, then how will you, you know, but it's not scripture alone because scripture alone can be manipulated by our own minds. It's not even, I mean, we're, we're, what we're reading are translations and people's, you know, when you translate another language, you have several words you get to choose from to translate that one word. And what if you pick a word that's slightly off? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I mean, scripture in its original intent, yes, is without error. But we have people that have been involved in copying it and translating it, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then even if you have, you know, the perfect version of scripture, wherever that is, sorry, I keep hitting the camera. Um, even if you have the correct version of scripture, you still have to look at it um, in context. And we don't have always the complete context of the scripture. So that truth bell gets guarded by scripture, but it also gets guarded by Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us how to discern within our own spirit. And Holy Spirit leads us into truth. Holy Spirit um, guides us into truth. Holy Spirit is truth. And, um, you know, then we also have just the overall life of Jesus. How did he live his life? And the words that he spoke and the things that he stood for, the things that he stood against, all of it in context of the bigger picture of his life, what he came here to do and to accomplish and where he is now in heaven. So I'm just saying like, when we listen to these prophetic voices, um, I can guarantee you in the days to come, we're going to find out um, some prophetic voices that have been right about some things and been wrong about some things. There is no prophetic voice. There is no person on earth who walks intimately with the Lord who has it all right. There isn't because we're all human. We're all on this side of eternity. And so it is important that you maintain that place in your own relationship with God to discern and to value what you have with him. Value what you have with him. And then, then in the, in the context of that, be free to hear from other people. Don't be afraid to listen to other voices because you have your own discernment and you have access to the Holy Spirit who will lead you into truth. And, um, yeah. Anyway, hope that encouraged someone. I just have uh, two quick scriptures for you this morning. And again, we're speaking into the Mountain of Arts and, Inter and Entertainment. <laughs> oh. And we're speaking into this understanding of um, the nuanced love of God that we were meant to encounter in this area of, of society. All things arts, sports, food, fashion, entertainment, all of that was meant to be an expression, a nuanced expression of the love of God in the form of his glory, his glory being seen in others and ultimately them pointing us to the glory of God, his creativity in his creative ones. Um, so first Chronicle 16 verse 10 says, give to the Lord the glory due his name. I want to just draw your attention to a reality that I have seen in scripture, which is you often see connected together the glory of God, the names of God, and the face of God. The glory of God, the names of God, and the face of God. And I believe the connection has to do with all three speak into his identity and the, the truth of 
who he is and how he is, his character and his nature, the knowledge of God. How do you know someone? You know someone by knowing their face, their countenance, and literally how they look. And you know someone by their name. And you know someone by their glory. So their glory is the essence and the core of who they are. It's their reputation. It what, it's what comes to mind when you think of them. And it's the impression that they leave. So one of those definitions of glory in the Old Testament is weightiness or impression. And so there's a weightiness um, to someone's reputation. It's the weight or the impression that they leave on you. So I, I, I tell you this almost as a tool for when you read scripture. Let it jump out to you whenever you see mention of the names of God, either a specific name of God or like the name of the Lord is to be praised. For example, the name, the face of God. There are script, a lot of scriptures that talk about the face of God. Um, and there's the hidden face of God, meaning that has to do with, with I believe, um, Jewish people who, they, you know, throughout, from going all the way back to the Israelites, you've hidden your face from us. It's... Um, Jesus was right among them and his face was hidden from them, his true identity. And then um, the names of God. So the names of God obviously connect to, you know, when you hear someone's name that you know them by their name, you know them by their face, you know them by their reputation. And so when we talk about as reformers specifically called to influence um, culture, to change the world, um, with our love and with God's solutions, his love through us. We're talking ultimately about Habakkuk 2.14, the knowledge of the glory of God filling the earth. Because as we, as we partner with God in, for his love and his solutions to show up in tangible ways in each area of culture, we're talking about people having access to the fact that there is a God, he does care, and he has solutions. And so that's, in essence, the knowledge of the glory of God filling the earth. Let's switch that word glory out for a second. The knowledge of the name of God filling the earth. The knowledge of the face of God filling the earth. So um, let that just stand out to you whenever you're reading about his name, his face, or his glory. One uh, perfect example of that, and I refer to this often, this is one of my favorite um encounters in scriptures when Moses asked to see the glory of God and God responded by saying you cannot see my face if you do if you will die so I'm going to hide you in the rock here so here again we've got his glory being asked for God immediately brings up his face and says you I'll let you see the back side of me so that it will not kill you and then he says he causes all of his goodness, the knowledge of the glory of God, all of his goodness to pass before him. And then God proclaims his name before Moses. And remember, that's the scripture that says, I am the Lord God, um, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in mercy, etc., etc. And so he begins to define his name as I am to Moses in response to Moses asking to see his glory. So that can even deepen our, our personal relationship with the Lord because as we're asking to know him more and grow in the knowledge of God personally, because we can't give away what we don't have, we wanna know him so that we can make him known, we can ask to see his face. Show me your face in this situation. Even if we're not gonna literally see his face, he knows what we mean. It's like, show me your true, your countenance. What, what's on your face right now? What are, what are you, you know how you can tell what someone's thinking often by looking at their face? You know, I wanna see your face. I wanna know what you're thinking. Um, his face and, and show me your glory in the situation, like, like your character and your nature. What, what's in your heart towards me and towards the situation right now? Um, your name, your face, your glory, your, your name. Show me your name in this situation. Do you want to be provider to me? Do you want to be Jehovah Rapha, my healer in this situation? 
do you want to be, um, you know, uh, my teacher? Um, do you want to be wisdom for me? What name? He's got so many names of, of who he is. It's, it's um, what comes to mind is this book that uh, John Paul Jackson published, The Names of God. There's just a whole thick coffee table book of them. Um, such a good book. I'm sure it's still available somewhere. John Paul Jackson, The Names of God. Anyway, um, all right. And then another scripture in Revelation. I didn't write down the exact reference, but it mentions that men blasphemed the name of God and did not repent and give him glory. So again, there's this connection between blaspheming the name of God and not repenting and giving him glory. This is huge, this connection between his name and his glory, his face and his glory. All right, we're going to end with 1 Peter 4, 14. And um, let's see, let me look this up real quick. 1 Peter, I'm looking in the Passion Translation. Um, I should have pulled this up before. I can never find 1 Peter. Okay. We're close. We're close. <laughs> um, talk amongst yourselves. Here we go. First Peter 4, 14. Let's see if I'm going to start there. I'm going to start at verse 13. Why would anyone harm you if you're passionate and devoted to pleasing God? But even if you happen to suffer for doing what is right. You will have the joyful experience of the blessing of God. Don't be intimidated or terrified by those who would terrify you, but give reverent honor in your hearts to the anointed one and treat him as the holy master of your lives. And if anyone asks you about the hope living within you already, excuse me, always be ready to explain your faith with gentleness and respect. Maintain a clean conscience so that those who slander you for living a pure life in Christ will have to lie about you and will be ashamed because of their slander. For it is better to suffer for doing good if it is in God's plan than for doing evil. I'm going to finish out this chapter. Christ suffered and died for sins once and for all, the innocent for the guilty, to bring you near to God by his body being put to death and by being raised to life by the Spirit. He went in the spiritual realm and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison because of their disobedience of long ago. For during the time of Noah, God patiently waited while the ark was being prepared. But only a few were brought safely through the floodwaters, a total of eight souls. This was a prophetic picture of the immersion that now saves you. Not a bathing of the physical body, but rather the response of a good conscience before God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is now in heaven at the place of supreme authority next to God. The very powers of heaven, including every angel and authority, now yield in submission to him. I love that. Um, there was, uh, verse 14 is the main one that I've wanted to point out to you. Um, it is not, I might, oh, <laughs> I was reading in the wrong chapter. <laughs> that was good though. Okay. Sorry. Um, that was like not even the right verse that I wanted. Okay. <clears throat> Beloved friends, this is 1 Peter 4. I'm starting at verse 12. Beloved friends, if life gets extremely difficult with many tests, don't be bewildered as though something strange were overwhelming you. Instead, continue to rejoice for you in a measure have shared in the sufferings of the anointed one, Jesus, so that you can share in the revelation of his glory. And celebrate with even greater gladness. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are greatly blessed because the spirit of glory and power 
who is the Spirit of God, rests upon you. So again, there is a connection between being persecuted for the name that we connect our, our identity with, Jesus, and um, if you're insulted because of the name of Christ, you are greatly blessed because the spirit of glory and power, who is the spirit of God, rests upon you. So when we are persecuted because we identify with the name of Jesus, then glory comes on us. A spirit of glory. Isn't that amazing? The spirit of glory and power. So don't be overwhelmed. Instead, rejoice. Don't be overwhelmed. Instead, rejoice. There is obviously a level of persecution right now that is very um, surprising for this nation in particular. And some of you in other nations, it's very familiar to you, unfortunately. But I believe this, this persecution that is here is, um, is a precursor to the spirit of glory that is going to rest on the church like never before the church in the United States. And so we're going to rejoice. We're not going to be overwhelmed by what we're seeing. Stay educated. See what's happening around us. Speak up. Wake up. Show up, as flyover conservatives say, um, one of my favorite podcasts. Um, speak up. Show up. Wake up. All the things. But do not be overwhelmed. Rejoice. First Peter 4.14. Read it. Get it. Take it. Apply it rejoice don't be overwhelmed refuse to be overwhelmed um, be fully convinced that this is a time to rejoice because of what is happening in our midst see with your spirit eyes I I I try really hard <laughs> at times to be like sober because I'm looking at what's happening around us and I'm educating myself. And it's, you know, we met with somebody this week, um, the man, Gary Humble, who has um, this new organization called Tennessee Stands. And I did not realize the corruption that is in our Tennessee state government. I see it now. Um, my, my eyes are wide open and I want to do something about it. And I, you know, I was kind of like, wow, I need to be really sober about this. And I just, I just, as I press into the Lord, I feel excited about whatever's next. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know um, how soon there's going to be a shift, but I feel hopeful. I'm not overwhelmed. I am rejoicing. So let's, let's stay there. Let's park there. Uh, again, the song for today is Christine DeMarco. Um, her song, Take Courage, He's in the Waiting. Let's continue to find him in these places of waiting. Take courage. Um, I might have given you that song earlier in the year, but it's my favorite, so I'm giving it to you again. Um, so be blessed. Have an amazing weekend. Uh, if you haven't watched the Chosen series, watch it. Binge it. It's amazing. It'll just make you fall in love with Jesus all over again. You'll be able to relate to the different characters in there. It's just such a good series. Um, bless them financially because they give it to us for free and we can pay it forward so that other people can watch it. Um, we're trying. If anyone has a connection to, um, what is his name? I'm going blank on his name. The, the guy that, um, is his name Tim? The guy that is the producer of the whole series. We want to have him speak at our upcoming um, Restore Arts and Entertainment one day online event. So if you have any connections, any inroads, please um, email us at contact at restore7.org. Um, we'd really like to get a hold of him and we need an inroad. Um, but what was I telling you? Anyway, there's the newest episode up. So you can watch that over the weekend if you missed it. And um, I think there's another one that's supposed to be available soon as well. So it's really good. All right. Um, 
So the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you strength. So I'll see you on Monday. I'm hoping Monday's the day that Johnny will hop on with us and speak to us about the seven seals and Revelation and all that very intriguing part of Revelation. So see you then.